Good morning, brothers and sisters. We miss our fellowship together. We're praying for you and look forward to being together soon. Today we celebrate our mothers. You raise our children. You hold our families together. Your ministry and service sustain our homes and enrich this church. Thank you for everything that you do. You bring joy to our lives. There is no greater privilege in life than that of having children to raise in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Having children is a blessing that comes with huge responsibilities. This morning we want to honor and appreciate our mothers by considering the duties of Christian mothers. The duties of Christian mothers. These are just some of the things they do for us. These duties are not only the duties of mothers, but also of fathers. Some of you are not yet parents, but one day you will be, so these lessons are for you. Others do not have children, but you have spiritual children, and you have duties toward them. So whether you are a father or a mother, a future parent or a spiritual mentor, there are important lessons here for you. The first duty of Christian mothers is to teach your children the Word of God. Teach them the Word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5 says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. The book of Deuteronomy was written by Moses near the end of his life, 40 years after the Lord led the people of Israel out of slavery in Egypt. Moses was 120 years old, and he knew that he would soon die. Before he died, Moses delivered his most important instructions to God's people. One of his first instructions was that they would pass on to their children the word of the Lord which he had delivered to them. It makes sense that if we desire to raise our children in the ways of the Lord, that we will teach them God's word. But look what Moses says here. He says, you shall love the Lord your God. You shall love the Lord your God. Your effectiveness in teaching your children God's word will depend largely on the depth of your own love for God. Think about teachers you've had in your life. You've had good teachers and bad ones. Who were your best teachers? They were probably the ones who were passionate about the things they were teaching and who knew them inside and out. We can read the Bible to our children, but unless they see genuine love for God in our lives, it will just go in one ear and out the other. Jesus often said, if you love me, keep my commandments. When parents are raising children, it's a wonderful opportunity to reflect on our own love for the Lord. We may say that we love the Lord, but do our actions show that our claim is true? The key tests of what we really love are our time, our finances, and our conversation. How we use our time, what we spend our money on, and what we talk about show our children what we love. If we read our children a bedtime story, but the rest of the day, our time and our conversation are all spent on other things, it won't have a strong effect in the hearts of our children. They need to see it in us. And that's exactly what Moses meant when he said, these words shall be on your heart. Your instruction of your children should be merely an overflow of your own meditation on God's word, which you have hid and treasured in your own heart. Psalm chapter 1 verse 1 says, how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree, firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and in its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers. How blessed is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. Children are observant. They see things. They feel things. They usually know the truth. We need to show our children that God's word is our delight. If we do not truly love the word of God, most likely they will not grow to love it. Some parents think that if they just take their children to church on Sunday, that's good enough. Church is important, 
But even more important is that as parents, we love the Word of God. Meditate on the Word of God. Talk about the Word of God throughout each day and during the week, not just on Sundays. As a parent, we should be like sponges which have soaked up the Word of God. And if you're like that sponge absorbing the Word of God, then the love which fills your heart will be squeezed out into the heart of your child. These words shall be on your heart, Moses says. Teach them diligently. Talk of them continually. Instructing a child is a full-time job, isn't it? I have four boys, and all day long it's daddy, book, daddy, book. They're learning. They're soaking things up. They need encouragement. They need love. They need correction. Wouldn't it be nice if you could tell a child something once and he would remember for all time? That's not been our experience. As a parent, you must understand that from the time your child is born, his rebellious nature exerts a continual pull away from God and towards sin. That's why you must teach your children diligently and relentlessly the Lord's commands must be a continual topic of conversation at the dinner table, in the car, when you get up in the morning, and when you put them down at night. Read God's Word together. Pray together. Discuss the sermon together. Satan is working hard to lead your children astray. We must be diligent to teach them the truth. And again, this goes back to your love for the Lord and having the words of the Lord hidden in your own heart so that they're always there on the tip of your tongue, ready to share them with your children. We need to teach our children, teach them diligently. But don't forget that you can also learn from your children. They learn from us. We can learn from them. Our children are a constant reminder of our sinfulness because they see our sin and they say what they see. One person said, children are unpredictable. You never know what inconsistency they're going to catch you in next. That's true. Daddy, bat ka nagali? Huwag kang sumigaw, daddy. Ouch, di ba? As parents, we teach with our words and by our example. Sometimes we sin every day. Those are opportunities to model repentance. So when your children correct you, be humble enough to learn from them. And when you're wrong, set a good example by quickly repenting and seeking forgiveness. Teach your children the Word of God. The second duty of mothers is to discipline your children. Discipline. There are different kinds of discipline. It depends on the offense and on the age of your children. There are times when my boys aren't rebellious. They're just a bit too wild and rowdy in the house. So I tell them to stand in the corner for a minute to calm down. When your children are older, discipline may mean loss of privileges to remind them that there are consequences for sin. But there are other times when those forms of discipline aren't enough. Let's look at what the Bible says about discipline. Proverbs 22, verse 15. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of discipline will remove it far from him. From the time a child is born, foolishness is in his heart. Even from their early months, you see selfishness and rebellion. It shouldn't surprise us as parents because even when we're old, we're still selfish and sometimes rebellious. Scolding, threats, and time out won't remove that foolishness from the heart of your child. Doing nothing and hope that they will grow out of it won't remove that foolishness from the heart of your child. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24 says, Whoever spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline, diligent to instruct, diligent to discipline. I know there are a lot of competing worldly philosophies and even Christian philosophies of discipline, most of which tell you not to spank your children. But the Bible is clear that disciplining your child, even spanking your child, is one of the best ways you can love them. It will be hard. It hurts. As a parent, when you have to discipline a child, there will be times when your child will just wear you out physically and emotionally. At those times, remember God's promises to parents. Remember also, good parenting isn't easy, 
but it's easier than bad parenting. I remember one occasion when a family visited our home. They had two children, and these kids were just beating on each other. They were hitting each other, hitting their parents, hitting us. They were even hitting our baby. I asked the parents, do you spank your children? They acted shocked and answered, we don't spank because we don't want to teach them that hitting is okay. I was incredulous. Their children were beating everything in sight with no consequences, and they thought this was teaching their children that hitting is not okay. I wanted to take those parents and tell them in love, no, what teaches your children that hitting is okay is when they are hitting one another and you don't discipline them. Imagine the life of those parents. It, it must be miserable. It's hard to discipline, but it's God's design, and it's what's best for your child. Hebrews 12, 11 says, All discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful, but sorrowful. Yet to those who have been trained by it, afterwards it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Discipline is hard in the moment. It hurts. But in the long run, it trains your child and produces righteousness in his heart. We have that choice as parents to do the easy thing now and produce hardness in the heart of our children, or to do the hard work of discipline and instruction, which may be painful, but produces the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Discipline your children, but do not exasperate them. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Discipline and instruction, we know what those mean. But what does it mean to not exasperate your children to anger? It means don't have unreasonable expectations of your child. Don't penalize them for simple mistakes, but do discipline them for willful disobedience and for sins that they know are wrong. Don't be angry with your child. Whether you're instructing your child or disciplining him, do so with patience and gentleness. Never discipline in anger. Anger will only exasperate. Don't belittle or humiliate your child, especially in front of others. Always treat your child with love and respect. When you love and discipline your child, that's when the instruction of God's word takes root in his heart. Teach your children the word of God. Discipline your children. Cherish your children, as Psalm 127 verse 3 tells us. Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. Children are such a blessing. They bring us great joy as we see them grow. They make life interesting. They keep us on our toes. They take care of us when we grow old. I'm one of eight children. I have three brothers and four sisters. When I was a boy, my mom would take us out. We'd go to the store, and when people would see us, they would tell my mom, I feel so sorry for you, because she had eight kids. That's the world's view, but children are not a curse. As husbands and fathers, our wives and children are a reward in life. It isn't eating out. It isn't a new car. It isn't a vacation. In the world's eyes, it's a treat for parents to get away from their children. That's their reward. For me, I love being with my children. That's my reward for a hard day's work, and that's the best part of my day. I know that there are days when your children drive you crazy, but remember, enjoy them during the good times and the bad. Even when they are just little monsters, appreciate that they are God's gift. Sometimes they're little monsters, but sometimes we're big monsters. So be thankful for the work that God is doing in your life through them and in their lives through you. So what are the duties of Christian mothers? Teach your children the Word of God. Discipline your children. Cherish your children. And don't forget to pray for your children continually. Pray for them. Ultimately, your children don't belong to you. They belong to God. And God has placed them on loan to you. We want our children to be saved, but only God can save them. We desire for them to walk with the Lord and to make wise choices. 
But as much as we want to, we can't make our children do what is right. Sometimes we see them making bad decisions, but there's nothing we can do. Once they're older, we can't make their decisions for them. We can see they're making a poor choice, but we can't stop them. What we can do is pray for them. Pray earnestly for your children. Pray for God's protection upon them. Pray that God will give them strong character. Pray that they will make wise choices. Pray most of all that God will give them the gift of salvation, for it is His alone to give. Teach your children the Word of God. Discipline your children. Cherish your children. Pray for your children continually. And above all, remind your children of the gospel. Remind them of the gospel. As parents, we value our children's education. We want them to surpass us, to have greater opportunities than we had. So we put them through school, hire tutors, get them lessons in art or music or sports. These are great. We do the same things for our kids. But remember, there is nothing your child needs to learn more than the gospel. Children need to hear the gospel every day. They should learn it at a young age. Listen to the words of Jesus. Mark chapter 10, verse 13. And they were bringing children to him so that they might touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Permit the children to come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it at all. Sometimes we think that children aren't ready for the gospel. The truth is, children are often more ready for the gospel than at any other time in their lives. The one who comes to Jesus must come fully dependent on the grace of God. Who better to come to Jesus with the simple faith of a child than a child? Even if your children are grown, they still need to hear the gospel from you. There are some who are prodigal sons or prodigal daughters. If you've taught them the gospel, they may reject it, but they won't forget it. Whatever their age, remind your child of the gospel. Make sure they hear it from you every day. Pray for them, cherish them, and trust God to do his work in their hearts. God's word never returns void. Thank you, mothers, for faithfully carrying out these duties and for everything you do for us. Thank you, spiritual parents. Your role is also very important. I want to close with a prayer for our children in remembrance and appreciation of mothers. Let my children be precious in your sight and devoted to your glory. Lend grace to my devotion, instruction, discipline, and example to my children, that my house may be a nursery for heaven, enriched with the trees of righteousness of your planting for your glory. Father, we give you thanks for our parents and spiritual parents. We thank you for our wonderful mothers. May you give them the grace to faithfully carry out these sacred duties. We ask that you will save our children, and may they walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, mothers, for all that you have taught us and for everything you do for us and for this church. Thank you for showing us the love of Christ. Happy Mother's Day and have a wonderful Sunday. God bless you.